The next thing we'll talk about is organizing your team and team users over in the organization screen. You can find the organization screen over in the gear icon, organization and users, or you can just click on the screen and hit control O. Let's talk about the left-hand side of the organization screen first. This is where you're gonna add new team members to your subscription or add free agent portal users. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new team member to the right-hand side of the screen by typing in their information and hitting create user. You'll get a message that the invitation was sent and they'll appear on the right-hand side of your screen. As you can see here, Stewie has not activated their account yet. The first tab on the right-hand side is team members. You'll see all your team members listed. Inside the permission screen, you can set whatever type of permissions on each user as appropriate for that type of user. Some users won't see billing. Some won't be able to delete. Some won't be able to add things. Some won't be able to see the templates. It's totally up to you and what type of user is this and how it's going to affect your team. So think carefully as you're setting these permissions. Now, one thing I do want to point out is in the top right here, you can click all if you want them to have access to all the things in this particular section. Or you can hit none if you want to take them all away. Another feature you'll see on the screen is the signature. Let's go ahead and set up a signature. When you're in the signature screen, go ahead and create a title for this signature and hit the add button. Now, when you open a new signature, you'll see the title up at the top, who it's going to be assigned to. So this is going to be assigned to Stewie. And then down here, you can create your signature. When you get back to the main signature page, you'll see that this signature was assigned to Stewie. And here's the title above. Now you can delete out this signature just by clicking this button. Another menu item you're going to see next to the names is the text number. So let's go ahead and click on a text number. This is going to give you the ability to type in an area code. Hit enter. And it's going to give you a list of phone numbers that you're going to be able to use through text and calling in the system. If you want to claim one of these numbers, it's as simple as clicking on the claim number button. For now, these numbers are free. Please go to our pricing page to see how many texts can be sent and how many call minutes can be made per month under your plan. After you claim your number, it's going to take you to this screen where you can assign the number to a particular user. Once you claim a number, you'll be on this screen where you can assign that number to one of your users. Once you assign it to a user, their name will appear on the assign to line and you can go ahead and close the screen out. Now the last button you're going to see is the impersonate user button. That is these two lines crossing each other with arrows at the end. When I click on this impersonate button, it's going to allow Phil to go into Stewie's account and see exactly what Stewie sees. This is really important during training or if you want to see a particular problem that one of your TCs is having. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the Teams menu. If you remember, I set up two additional teams on top of the default team that was in the program. Now I can come over to my users and set which users are going to be on my team. In this case, I only have two people in my organization, so I'm going to go ahead and add Stewie to my team. You're going to click on the Users button, and then you're going to come up to this top tab next to My Team Users and click Choose User. I'm going to come down here and select Stewie, and then I'm going to add him to my team by clicking on the purple Add button. Now once he's on my team, I'm going to have to assign him some roles. As I previously mentioned in the video, each task is going to have a role assigned to it. So in this case, we're going to say that Phil is giving up his compliance manager and email specialist roles. Now every task in my system assigned to my team, which is the name of this team, and assigned to the compliance manager is now going to be assigned to Stewie. Anything assigned to my team and the document specialist is going to be assigned to Phil. Now you can overlap on these. You can have multiple roles. Let's say that Phil is going to watch Stewie for a little while to make sure that he knows what he's doing with compliance. I can check Phil as a compliance manager and also Stewie as a compliance manager. They're both going to be assigned to those compliance tasks. Now one thing I do want to point out is if Phil is training Stewie, he can also be a compliance manager. I can have multiple people in the same role. All that's going to do is on the task assigned to the compliance manager role, it's basically going to assign that to both Phil and Stewie so that Phil can keep an eye on Stewie as he's training. Now I can't stress this enough. Please go through your roles and set this up for what your team is going to look like 10 years down the road. This is very important so that you don't have to constantly go back and change your tasks. 
If you set these up for what your business is going to look like, you'll never have to go back and edit your task roles again. Let me point out one or two more examples. Let's pretend that Stewie's sick today and Phil's going to fill in for him. Now one way to do that is come over to Phil's roles and we already clicked the compliance role so he's already on those but we can also just check the email specialist role for one day. Now after Stewie comes back to the job we can go back into Phil's roles and uncheck that email specialist and compliance manager and now all those tasks are going to update instantly throughout the system. So if someone's sick if someone's on leave, if someone gets hired, if someone gets promoted, if someone gets fired, these are all reasons that you may come in here and adjust your roles. It's very easy to adjust these roles and have all your tasks update. Okay, let's jump back over to the main screen. The next selection is going to be your agents. These are free agent accounts. Your agents are going to have access to not only the mobile app, but an online portal that they can log into and see what's going on with the transaction. Now, I probably wouldn't add your agent yet until you're comfortable with the system yourself. But let's go through it anyway and I'll show you the basics now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on agents. Now at this time we don't have any agents, so we're going to have to go ahead and add one now. So I've added Peter here. Under the user type, you're going to select agent portal user. And you're going to come down here and say create user. As you can see here, it's going to give us a confirmation that the Agent Portal user was added and invited. Now if we go over to the Agents tab, Peter will be listed. Now I can use the same Impersonate button as we had on the last screen for your agents. So if you want to go over and look at their Agent Portal and see what they have, or possibly even set up a table or segment or two, feel free to go over there and set things up for them as needed. But for now, let's go ahead and click on Peter's name. When I click on Peter's name, it's going to open up this menu item. You're going to be able to put business information about this person, email, cell phone, phone number. Over here, we haven't got the intake forms, but you're going to be able to add intake forms to this agent. And we'll go over that in a bit. The other thing is going to be the contacts. Do you want them to only see the contacts that they input to the system, or do you want to share your contacts with them? One other decision you're going to have to make is, do you want them to be able to edit your organizational contacts? Make sure you choose the appropriate option for your team. That's all I want to cover for now in Agents, but we will come back to this later and show you how an agent portal is set up and how it looks inside. The next menu item we're going to tackle is Brokerages. Brokerages is fairly simple. You're going to go ahead and say Add New, type in the name of the brokerage, and choose a color that you want the background of your intake forms to have. In this case, I typed in Acme Brokerage. You can come to the color screen and you can select your color. Once it's added, it'll be right here, and you can click on it at any time to see or update your color. The other thing you can do is add a logo. Go ahead and click here or drag and drop the logo in. The last thing we're going to cover in this screen is the client portal roles. If you're going to be inviting clients to portals, they'll also have access to the app. Now, you may not want them to see everything, so we do have permissions for each of these roles. We're going to touch on this later in the onboarding series as well, but for right now, like agents, we're going to give you just a sampling of how this works. The two roles that automatically came in are buyer and seller. Now I'm going to want to set my permissions. So every time there's a buyer added to a client portal, what do I want them to see? So over here you have a choice. Timeline, this is kind of like your milestone dates. Details, these are all the fields that you set in your field editor for them to be able to see. Contacts, so let's go ahead and just add some of these so you can kind of get an idea of how this works. Documents. Do you want them to upload or download documents? Do you want them to see tasks? Do you want them to see completed tasks, scheduled tasks, unscheduled tasks? You have a lot of different options in here. For right now, we're just going to add everything. And then you also have notes. Now, as you can see, if you added contacts, it does say the default is all contacts unless roles are selected. So you're probably going to want to select the roles that you want your clients to see. And I can come in here and say, I want them to see the escrow officer, the title officer, the appraiser, the home inspector, and the termite inspector. So now when you click off of the screen, you're going to be able to give them access to personal information or business information. In this case, I'm just going to give them the business information view. If you wanted them to have both, all you'd have to do is click this button. Now in my case, I don't want them to see tasks, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this out. I'll let them see documents and be able to upload and download documents. I only want the business information visible to my clients. 
And I'm not going to give them access to all the fields in my field editor as well. I'm just going to give them the milestone dates. So I feel pretty good about this view right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now every buyer that I add and assign the buyer role in the future, they're going to see the exact same thing. So you're going to have to do the same thing with seller. You're going to have to click on permissions and decide what you want your sellers to see as well. So let's say buyer and seller isn't enough and you want to add some additional roles for niche products that you offer. In this case, let's just say it's a divorce buyer. So on divorces, I like to give them a little less information and I like to convey everything through email so that both sides get the exact same information. So let me type in divorce buyer. I'm going to go ahead and add that role. It's going to come in here and it's going to give me options. So in this case, I'm just going to give them timelines and I'm going to give them the documents. I'm going to give them the ability to upload and download documents and that's it. So this is going to be a much reduced view from my regular buyer. Everybody's business is going to be a little different. So this gives you the flexibility to create whatever you want and give them whatever view you want. So we're all finished with the organization screen for now. We'll be revisiting this as we go through this onboarding series. But for now, we're going to move on to starting a manual transaction and getting some templates ready.